Hello, I'm Helen Tovey, I'm editor of Family Tree, and I'm going to talk to Nick Barrett today about his talk at the forthcoming Secret Lies conference, and he's going to be speaking about a forgotten spy. Now, obviously, a spy doesn't want to be found, so this you probably set yourself one of the hardest tasks. So, how did you first get into this at all? Well, there was always a story about my great uncle, Ernest Holloway Oldham, and he disappeared from the family tree in the early 1930s, and no one thought to look into his life. It was mm. one of those ancestors, I suppose, that people forgot about. He had no children, so yeah. that was the end of the line. And it was a pure chance discovery that we found out he had this secret life when a file appeared at the National Archives with his name on it. And intriguingly, it was linked to the Secret Service, MI5. Yeah. So, of course, that whetted the appetite. Yeah, and you yeah. just had to dive in at that point. Yeah, yeah. And so you had no inkling, no clues being passed down to your family that you had a spy in the midst? None at all. Yeah. We didn't even know what he looked like. There was yeah. no photographs. Yeah. There was no personal memorabilia. There was nothing about him at all. Now, that should have rung a few bells. Yeah. Because one of the things about espionage is this sort of real cover-up of one's secret life. Yeah. But to have no information at all, that was really unusual. So it made the job of trying to unpick his life that bit harder. Yeah. So we're talking about after the First World War, and it's that interwar era. And what was the spy scene like at the time? Well, after the end of the First World War, the focus of attention shifted from fears of German invasion to a different sort of ideological invasion and this was the rise of the Soviet Union after the withdrawal of Russia and the Bolshevik Revolution there was this real sense that this ideological shift this new sort of warfare without borders was now coming into Great Britain and so there was a real sense of who was on the right side how do you track a different unconventional sort of infiltrator. So there was a lot of sense of secrecy around Soviet missions for trade, for commerce, the rise of the Labour Party. Yeah. So again, the sense that there may well be the enemy within. This was an entirely different beast and so no one really knew where to look. So what sort of things did his spy records tell you? Were they, were they quite discreet or once you got the file, were you in for um, a whole load of treats? What was it like? There was some amazing detail, but it was really the end of his story mm. because it was when MI5 first picked him up on their radar. It relates to his job, without giving too much away, yeah. in Whitehall. He was a foreign office minister, well not minister, I suppose he was within the um, communications department, so he was high up without having official government status. Mm. But he was in charge of looking after the cipher department, and on his watch, a couple of cipher codes went missing. Yeah. Now up till this point, no blame or any suspicion was diverted to him for that, but his activities got increasingly erratic. He would disappear for long spells. So he's actually a, a double agent. No, not a double agent. But he's a he's spying for not for the British. He's spying against the British. Yeah, he was oh, sacked, yeah. and very unusually, he wasn't granted a pension when he was dismissed, yeah. which was usually an indication that he was under suspicion for something. Yeah. So the file picks up when he was placed under surveillance. So you've got phone taps, you've got intercepts, you've got yeah. reports of him being tailed by MI5 agents. Yeah. So it is really cloak and dagger. Yeah. But you can't help but feel that it was quite unsophisticated and uncoordinated they did not know <laughs> yeah. what they were dealing with yeah uh, which becomes clear when you start digging even deeper and you see the other side of the story from what was the Russian intelligence service OGPU at the time and that's where the really interesting stuff starts to appear so you've, you, you've had to look in Russian archives as well yes now he does appear but inadvertently in other people's stories of this time a lot of the attention in the 30s focuses on the beginnings of the Cambridge spy ring he's just before that but without my chap the Cambridge spy ring would not have existed. In fact, you can find a dotted line from some of the diplomatic manoeuvrings in the late 1930s between the Russians and the Germans back to his activities in 1932 when the Germans were first brought back into the League of Nations. He was feeding secrets to the yeah. Russians, which gave them the inside track. So he was a pivotal figure, yet no one knew anything about it. Yeah. I don't know whether I don't know what you'd feel about that. Do you feel... I mean, it's definitely fascinating to research it, <laughs> <laughs> but is it... Um, is it purely exciting or do you feel a little bit like guilty or shifty to have, what do you feel about that, how, finding this answer? It was really difficult because on the one hand there was this badge of honour finally having worked on who do you think you are all those yeah. years and discovering secrets for other people. He was yeah. one of my own, I felt yeah. part of the club. Yeah. But then I'm several generations removed yeah. and my uncle who can vaguely remember him when he found out the story, he was really shocked yeah. because he was a living person, not an abstract, yeah. who, for me, was never in the family tree. He was just a name. Yeah. He was another person to track down. 
And then I started thinking about him as a person, the amount of layers I had to go through to uncover any sense of his activity, because yeah. he was this sort of figure ghosting in and out of the official records. He was involved in the First World War, he got blown up, he was passed over for promotion. There was a real sense of disappointment, bitter yeah. disappointment, yeah. and you just can't help but put yourself in his shoes. So he was a traitor, and so there's a sense of repulsion of what he did to his colleagues, to his country, but a sense of sorrow that he'd been abandoned by his country as well yeah. and treated so badly. So yeah. it was really mixed emotions. And also, any of us, you're, you're in your life, you're in the moment, aren't you? You don't know where the consequences are going. He, it may well have been, um, communism may have been a cause he believed in. That's perfectly just isn't it? It's, uh, a lovely, yeah. it's a lovely idea that that might be the case. <laughs> Certainly it isn't. It was money that motivated <laughs> okay, him. Yeah. yeah, there's a whole backstory about him marrying above his status to a supposedly wealthy widow, but the money was a bit of a mirage and they overcommitted on a house and a chauffeur driven car and the money evaporated. So yeah. he was really doing it for the money. Yeah. She's a story in herself. She's the sort of Lady Macbeth figure spurring him on yeah. to greater deeds of treachery and then running when the axe was about to fall. So there's all sorts of layers to this story. There's Be secrets within secrets. <laughs> oh, that's a thought. Now yeah. that would be lovely to do. You can almost sense the character starting to be played out. But yeah, yeah it would be a great thing to film and put so, on a big screen. Um, if somebody has a hunch that they've got a spy in their family, how on earth would they start researching them? What might they do? Is, is it possible to do it or is there a time frame? Like presumably there's going to be official secrets so they won't be able to do it for immediately. No, more modern espionage is obviously locked down and there are some official sources that have investigated MI5, MI6, the main agencies. There is some material being released relating to Special Operations Executive where there is sort of crossover with espionage, so that's mainly up to the Second World War. But the main set to look at are the KV series of records of the National Archives. These are case files kept mm. by the intelligence services on potential spies, whereas the spies themselves tend to remain more in the shadows. But you never know what lies beneath an ordinary everyday life. You have people who were placed in positions by the Soviets or by the British monitoring the Soviets who only revealed later on in family papers that they had this double life or potentially in, I suppose deathbed confession is probably too strong a phrase, mm -hmm. but recounting later on when it no longer matters. Mm -hmm. So keep asking questions, and it's often, often where people shy away from a direct answer. That's the bit where you need to focus on that date period, have a look at what was going on in the country at large mm -hmm. or on the international stage, and just see if their movements intersect with known activities. Wow, that sounds very exciting indeed. Yeah, thank you very much, Nick. I've just got one last question. Um, over the conference weekend, um, what are you particularly you looking forward to? Like, there's, there's lots of interesting topics, aren't there? And you've done family history for, you know, for forever. <laughs> so you, obviously most of it will be familiar to you. But um, because they're such unusual topics, hopefully there's other things still that you'd like to learn. Well, that's the great thing about it. It feels like you've been doing it forever. I mean, I've only been really involved for 15 years or so, which is, which is nothing compared to some people who'll be there. But you always find out something new when you talk to people. And it's all of those other secret lives that are coming to light. That's the interesting thing. In isolation, your story of those of the ones you've unearthed are interesting. When you put them together, you get this different perspective on the past. So as a medievalist, I'm looking forward to finding out more about some of the ancient lost stories mm -hmm. coming out of court roles or the legal process. But equally, it's some of the more recent ones as well that you simply would not have heard about if it wasn't for the wonders of genealogy and a conference like this bringing them all out into the open. Excellent. Thank you very much, Nick. Thank you.